The Bamboo Lab A1 Mini is currently considered the best beginner 3D printer on the market, and I actually agree with that. It can print in multiple colors with the AMS Lite filament switcher and calibrates itself, leading to almost perfect print quality without having to manually adjust anything. But apart from being impressed by the print results, I was quite surprised by the huge amount of filament used for multicolor printing. And if you are thinking about getting this 3D printer, you should definitely know what you are getting into and how much more expensive each printed object will be. And that's exactly what we will look at in this video. The A1 Mini is available by itself for currently 299 or as a combo with the AMS Lite, which costs an additional 160. With the filament switcher, up to 4 filaments can be used for an object, without it only one. But no matter how many filaments you want to use, the A1 Mini does a self-calibration. This includes leveling the print bed and adjusting the Z-offset, calibrating the motor noises to filter out the most annoying sounds, calibrating the axis vibration resonance to minimize vibrations of the print head at high speeds, and dynamically calibrating the filament flow with a pressure sensor. The first three of these calibrations are more like quality of life features, as they don't really impact the print quality, but just make things easier for you and reduce the operating noise. The last two calibrations, however, are crucial for the almost perfect print quality and save you a lot of manual calibration work. I have been printing various multicolor objects from different PLA filaments over the past few weeks and haven't changed the default settings in the slicer even once. After testing over 40 different FDM 3D printers, this was a first for me. Usually, I would at least calibrate the print temperature and retraction for each new filament to get such results. That's why the A1 Mini is so great for beginners. The sometimes complicated and time-consuming calibrations are mostly just not needed. But enough of the praise, let's get to the necessary evil of multicolor printing. The flushing volumes. The flushing volume is the amount of filament that's extruded between printing with two different filaments to prevent them from mixing. When the A1 Mini switches to a new filament, it cuts the old one and loads the new filament. To make sure only the pure new filament comes out of the hot nozzle, the rest of the old filament has to be flushed out. This happens in two steps. First, the leftover piece of the old filament is extruded. Then, the new filament is extruded until there is no visible mixing with the previous filament. The second amount varies depending on the color combination. The higher the contrast between the two colors, the more needs to be extruded. In Bamboo Lab's own slicing software, Bamboo Studio, you can either automatically generate these volumes or set them manually. Using the automatic settings, I always got clean results. Trying to manually adjust the settings to save some filament didn't work out too well. In this model, the dark filament wasn't flushed out completely before switching to white. Only when the upper layers of the model didn't need any dark filament, the white came out pure. And now for some numbers. In order to show the filament consumption not only in grams but also in money, I assume a price of $23 per kilogram of filament. As you can see, the filament usage and printing time for multicolor printing are much higher. On average, the printer uses 5 times more filament on multicolor prints. You need to decide for yourself if multicolor printing is worth it. Because the perceived quality of the final product is subjective. For decorative items, like the ones I've shown here, I think it's definitely worth it. Trying to be a bit more objective, I placed the results into the classic quality triangle. In my view, the multicolor prints are definitely a 10 out of 10 in terms of quality or perceived value of the object. But compared to single color printing, they lag far behind in speed and cost efficiency. I would love to hear your thoughts on the quality versus cost relationship in the comments below. Do you think it's worth it? If you're looking for more information about this printer, I have linked my detailed review in the video description and in the pinned comment you can go straight to the manufacturer's page. Thank you for watching and I'm out.